morning and welcome to Coffee with Pastor. This is February the 7th of 2024. Good morning to you and I trust you have your hot cup of coffee. Here's mine right here, ready to be enjoyed and I intend to enjoy it to its fullest. And I have my copy of the Word of God open to the Gospel of John, the Gospel of John and chapter 13. Please join us there. Follow along with us. Uh, studies show that we uh, retain more if we have more than one sense engaged. So we're going to engage our hearing and we're going to engage our sight. And so please follow along with us as we do. And again, continuing with our vocabulary. Uh, we have learned what despair is. We have learned what burglarize is. Today's word is avoidable. Avoidable. The definition of the word avoidable, and here it is. What does a bullfighter try to do? What does a bullfighter try to do? Avoidable. Okay, putting that aside, and again, good morning to you. Today is going to be a phenomenal day, and already my time is slipping away. But as we get started, um, let me just mention it's going to be an amazing day. I've got a lot of studying to do. That's, that's a good thing. I enjoy my time in the studies. And tonight... Tonight is prayer meeting, 6 o'clock, First Baptist Church of Prudenville, and I get to get together with my congregation, with my people, and we get to fellowship. We get to open up the Word of God study. Um, we'll be in First John chapter 5 tonight, and then we share our requests, and we go before the throne of grace. And just a good, good time as we get together with God's people, get together with God's Word and come before God's throne together as a body, as a family. And so if you are in our area, we would invite you to join us. It is nine o'clock already. I've gone over time. And so let's go ahead. Let's bow our heads, bow our hearts before our Heavenly Father. Good morning, Lord. Thank you for another beautiful, beautiful day that you have given to us. We pray that today, today, we would bring honor and glory to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and to the God whom we serve. Lord, I want to say thank you for this day. You already know what the day holds. You already know what we're going to face. Lord, as we come into your presence... Oh, for the grace to be faithful to you in all that we say and all that we do. Work in and through your people. Make us exactly what you would have us to do, to be. And Father, use us as you see fit. Father, we understand that there's not a struggle, there's not a trial that comes into our life that does not have a purpose to draw us closer to you, to help us to realize how dependent we are upon you. And so, Father, we pray that we would not look at temptations and struggles as necessarily problems, but rather opportunities. And, Father, as we respond, perhaps there will be people watching, and it's an opportunity to glorify you as well. And for us to display your goodness, your glory, and your grace upon our lives. Your compassion and your love and your mercy. Oh, Father, that you would use us to draw others closer and closer to your Son, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, for this glorious time. Thank you for the privilege we have to open up your word. Father, as we read it. You know what we stand in need of, what we need to learn, what we need to hear. Father, minister your word to us. May your spirit have free course in our hearts and lives. And Father, bless your people. Make us blessable. Bless us. Again, make us what you would have us to become. 
And Lord, again, that our lives would bring honor and glory to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's in his precious and holy name that we ask it. Amen. We are in John's Gospel, chapter 13, the last Passover. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. And supper being ended, the devil having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hand, and that he was come from God, and went to God. He riseth from the supper, and laid aside his garments, and took a towel, and girded himself. After that he poureth water into a basin, and began to wash the disciples' feet, and to wipe them with a towel wherewith he was girded. Then cometh he to Simon Peter, and Peter saith unto him, Lord, dost thou wash my feet? Jesus answered and said unto him, What I do thou knowest not now, but thou shalt hear know hereafter. Peter saith unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. Simon Peter said unto him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus saith unto him, He that is washed needeth not, save to wash his feet, but is clean every whit, and ye are clean, but not all. For he knew who should betray him. Therefore said he, Ye are not all clean. So after he had washed their feet, and had taken his garments, and was set down again, he said unto them, Know ye what I have done to you? Ye call me Master and Lord, and ye say, Well, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that ye should do as I have done to you. Verily, verily, I say unto you, The servant is not greater than his Lord. Neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. If ye know these things, happy are ye if ye do them. I speak not of you all. I know whom I have chosen. But that the scripture may be fulfilled. He that eateth bread with me hath lifted up his heel against me. Now I tell you before it came, that... When it is come to pass, ye may believe that I am he. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that receiveth whomsoever I send, receiveth me. And he that receiveth me, receiveth him that sent me. When Jesus had thus said, he was troubled in spirit and testified, saying, Verily, verily, I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. Then the disciples looked one on another, doubting of whom he spake. Now there was leaning on Jesus' bosom, one of the disciples whom Jesus loved. Simon Peter therefore beckoned to him, that he should ask who it should be of whom he spake. He then, lying on Jesus' breast, said unto him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, He it is to whom I shall give a sop when I have dipped it. And when he had dipped the sop, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. And after the sop, Satan entered into him. Then said Jesus unto him, That thou doest, do quickly. Now, no man at the table knew for what intent he spake this unto him. 
For some of them thought, because Judas had the bag, that Jesus had said unto him, Buy those things that we have need of against the feast, or that he should give something to the poor. He then, having received the sop, went immediately out, and it was night. Therefore, when he was gone out, Jesus said, Now is the Son of God glorified, Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God be glorified in him, God shall also glorify him in himself, and shall straightway glorify him. Little children, yet a little while I am with you. Ye shall seek me, and as I said unto the Jews, Whither I go, ye cannot come. So now I say unto you, A new commandment give I, I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have love one to another. Simon Peter said unto him, Lord, whither goest thou? Jesus answered him, Whither I go, thou canst not follow me now, but thou shalt follow me afterwards. Peter said unto him, Lord, why cannot I follow thee now? I will lay down my life for thy sake. Jesus answered him, Wilt thou lay down thy life for my sake? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, The cock shall not crow till thou hast denied me thrice. And may God add his blessing to the reading of his word. What a way to end the chapter. Proclaiming the fact that Peter was going to deny him. And not only deny him, but deny him thrice. Heaven forbid you and I deny our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in word or in deed. Again, we call each and every one of you to faithfulness to God. We ask that you please, and again, I'm not saying be faithful to me, the coffee with pastor. I'm saying be faithful to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He is indeed Lord and Master. Beloved, stay faithful. Never allow yourself to become someone else's excuse for turning away from the gospel of Jesus Christ. Remember, God loves you. He loves you very dearly. And, and by the way, I just feel like I should mention this again. If you are anywhere near our area, join us tonight. As we gather together again, 1 John chapter 5 is where we'll be as we study the word of God together. And we have the opportunity to lift our hearts and minds and lives before the Almighty God. Join us. And until tomorrow, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen.